On warm spring days, these jelly balls seemingly appear out of nowhere. If you are on a lake, you can see them everywhere floating on the surface. They have the appearance of plastic garbage and the consistency of breast implants. They are not slimy, but have a rather firm appearance and break apart when you rip them. A bit like gelatin. I didn't have the courage to bite into them, so I cannot tell you how they taste exactly. What are they though? Human made? Alien? Or something entirely different? After catching one of the balls, we start to have a closer look and we notice some granular structures in it. These grains have a green appearance. Something seems to be living in these balls. Did some organism colonize the object or did the living thing make the ball? Let's take a look at some chunks under a microscope. When we zoom in, we see these elongated things embedded in the gelatinous matrix. They also contract from time to time and seem to be active also on the inside. They definitely are alive. These creatures are not green by themselves, but they appear to contain green granules. They also have this moving crown of tiny hairs, stirring up the water around them. That indeed looks like a filter feeding ciliate. A microbe. And the green granules on the inside look like symbiotic algae. It seems to be an animal, which also can feed on sunlight, just like a plant would. The microorganism is called Ophridium versatile. It is a quite common appearance and is an indicator for excellent water quality. Ophridium builds these balls underwater, attached to water plants or stones. But since Ophridium also contains algae, if exposed to sunlight, these algae produce oxygen, which can get trapped as bubbles on the inside of the jelly ball which causes the ball to break loose and rise to the surface, where it starts to drift. These spheres can be much bigger than the ones in this video, up to 15 centimeters. Ophridium has a vacuole pumping out water from the cell, and it also has a macronucleus. The black spiral is the nucleus containing the cell's DNA. Ophridium uses cilia to stir up the water and to filter bacteria and other food particles from the water. The algae inside of Ophridium produce also sugar, which is used as food by Ophridium, but also as the building material, called polysaccharides, for the matrix of the ball-shaped colonies Ophridium is living in. If, for example, there is no light, Ophridium can also consume the algae, which ultimately will cause Ophridium to bleach. I'm not entirely sure if the bleached Ophridium can reacquire algae. If conditions get any worse, Ophridium can also abandon the colony and resettle in a more advantageous location. Embedded in the polysaccharide jelly matrix are also the stalks, where the cell of Ophridium attaches to. Ophridium can retract and contract itself if it senses danger to avoid being eaten or injured. The massive colonies provide also habitat for a lot of other microbes, like bacteria and diatoms, just to mention a few. These spheres are a microhabitat with surprising complexity. The jelly ball is a floating microbe megacity. Millions of these creatures live in it, among others. In conclusion, the gelatinous balls are a massive colony of microbes that are animals but also act as plants. They grow green algae on the inside that provide the microbes with oxygen and sugar, while the microbe protects and feeds the algae with minerals and CO2. Next time you're at the lakeside, look out for these marvels. They are absolutely fascinating and give us a glimpse into the complexity of this strange, strange world. Thanks for watching. Let's dig up some more dirt and let's stay curious. Bye bye.